Greetings, subscribers and other curious persons. Green Star Complete Season 1 came out at the start of this month, and rather than mentioning that we were releasing it and using our standard low-key approaches we'd taken on our individual previous releases, Simon Canton and I did a slightly larger Green Star release events every day push on social media. Now, one week later, the stats indicate that it's the best release week for any of our books. So that looks quite successful. And we've both posted some analysis of how it went in places. Mostly, people thought it was a good release week and that the sales show that it was successful, but one of the comments I had on a slightly more obscure forum was how can you call it a victory when you have to share your sales with someone else? Which raises two issues. The sharing of sales and also whether or not it's a victory, which wasn't actually the word I used. I used the word successful, but why would we expect linguistic accuracy on a writing forum? But anyway, um, firstly, the sales issue. Well, if I sold eight books and have to share that with Simon, then that's effectively four books profit each. If I've only ever sold three books in the first week of release usually, then I've still made a profit. And the figures for how much more successful it was were much, much better than a three to four ratio. I think Simon worked it out at about 8,000% increase in first week sales. So just on sales alone, it's successful. But it wasn't just on sales alone. I'm aware of people who, because they liked Simon's books, bought Green Star and are now interested in reading my books. I'm also aware of people who found Green Star because they like my books and are now looking to read all of Simon's work. So despite the fact we'd previously been mentioning how great we thought each other's works were in social media, on our blogs, in person, the fact we have now released a book together has increased the amount of our individual audiences who are now also following the other one. So it's not just the increase in sales from Green Star, there's an increase in sales on our individual works and potentially that will continue to occur. So were I to not use the word successful, I would be quite happy in terming that a victory. But more importantly, it's not a victory because I have to share. It goes to the heart of something that divides the writing community, whether writing is a zero-sum activity, whether every book written by someone else that sells is a lost sale for me, which quite frankly seems a little absurd. Looking at my Goodreads account for the last three years, I've read nearly 200 books a year. So if we were to take the every book I read by one author takes away from another author, well, that would only, I'd only really be having an impact on authors who had released hundreds of books. That for my 200 books, I don't think I could find an author who had written 200 books that I'd all want to read in preference. So unless they were the only author in the world, I'm going to read other books anyway. And so I've read, I found an author with 200 books. I've read their 200 books. 
and that's my year filled. So I move on to a new year. And well, in so we're expecting the author to have written another 200 books while I was reading the first 200. Even if we take a slightly more conservative estimate of an avid reader reading one book a week, that's still 52 books a year. So for someone to be taking sales away from you, you'd have to have written 52 books a year or 52 books that were so good that someone wanted to go, well, it's January. In January of every single year, I read Green Star Complete season one again. I've been doing it for the last 20 years. It just doesn't work. It's, the idea that it's zero sum is just insane, really. <clears throat> there are Unless you come down to someone who reads very few books, the idea that them picking one book rather than another means you've lost sales forever is very, very odd to me. But maybe there are arguments the other way. A lot of people do seem to think that it is a zero sum that you should avoid talking up people who write in a similar vein to yourself because if you're selling steampunk doll romance written in Korean then you want to get all of the steampunk doll Korean romance readers to read only your books because they're only going to read one of them. If they like a specific subgenre, then they like the specific subgenre. So they're going to go out of their way to read as much of it as they can. If they don't like the subgenre, then you haven't lost them because they read someone else's book. You've lost them because they don't like books that are written like that. So maybe the chance is they read your book rather than another one in the genre and then they never read any of your other books because they're in the same genre. But they don't read any of your non-existent competitors books either. You haven't lost them. You never had them in the first place. So. Really, trying to be even-handed about this, I'm having great difficulty coming up with reasons why I wouldn't go. These books are really great. They're kind of like my books. Because then you've programmed someone to think of your books and their books the same. So someone goes, I read this really great Korean steampunk doll romance book. It's by Korean steampunk doll romance book writer Seven. And the person goes, well, really? I've heard that Korean doll punk steam romance writer Seven is a lot like doll romance Korean steam writer punk Three. So it meshes together. Combining is, as that fun demonstration they do with the twigs and the string shows, better than going it alone. But lots of people disagree, so let's take it to the comments. Toodaloo!